didn't come to my immediate attention that someone was upstairs. It was a slow, reluctant realization that roused my inactive mind. The series of bumps, the patter of footsteps, it was all too real. Someone was in my house. You hear about it in movies, you see it on TV, but you never expect it to happen to you. You trust your neighbors, your friends, your neighborhood is too good. Nothing like this would happen until you are home alone and every creaking floorboard, every word uttered under deep breaths, sends a chill down your spine like you just want it all to end. I don't want to go upstairs and stop him, I just want him to take what he wants and leave. I wait, and I wait. Hours pass and yet the noises do not cease. Cluttering. Banging like someone shifting through my drawers, leaving no valuable untouched. Why isn't he coming down here? I thought, is he afraid of me? Does he know someone is here? The second stage sets in. Getting past the panic and the adrenaline is rushing. I can't let him just take what he wants. I need to arm myself and I need to go upstairs. I need to get into the kitchen. I get down low to minimize the sound of my footsteps, opening the door so that I am in the open air with the robber paralyzed. The tears, the breathing, the pacing, the smashing. I felt the anger and panic behind each sound. Was I the source of his ire? Was the state of panic mutual? I thought, maybe we are both scared of each other. I turned my attention back to the gleaming knife set in the kitchen drawer. A birthday gift for my father-in-law, never used once. I take it slow. One step. Two steps. Three steps. Four steps. I want to stop, but I can't. If he came onto the landing, he'd see me. I bite my lip and continue on. Five steps. Six steps. Seven steps. Eight steps. Adrenaline takes over and I dive onto the kitchen floor, feeling its cold surface wipe off the sweat of my palms. I stay seated on the kitchen floor, listening to the sounds of pure hatred as the thief shreds through my belongings. I take a deep breath, so deep that I pause in fear that he heard me do so, and then I begin to shuffle closer to the kitchen drawer. I kneel to the height of the lock and wrestle with the creaking hinges to get it open. I don't care if he hears me, I have protection. I shuffle through the contents of the drawer and go to grab the first knife on the rack, only to come back empty handed. I try again, grabbing around at the empty space. I was confused. Did I move the knife out? I grip the edge of the drawer tightly and hoist myself so as to peek over at the contents. All five knives are missing. I fall back down to the ground. Now the next stage sets in. Questioning and self-pity. Why me? I ask, tears welling up in my eyes. I should have just accepted the situation. My phone is upstairs on my bed. My only form of self-defense is gone and I have no idea where the thief is and yet I am determined to go upstairs. Taking small steps in the dark. I have heard all about disarming. I knew how to fight. It was all I needed. So I shuffle back over to the hallway and peer up the stairs. Complete and utter darkness. I take it slow. One step. Two steps. Three steps. Four steps. I am halfway up and can make out a large figure in the reflection of the glass. Five steps. Six steps. Seven steps. Eight steps. I peek into the bedroom where I saw the figure in the glass. I just need to get closer. Nine steps. Ten steps. Just as I am ready to rush in, I feel two cold hands grip my face from behind and pull me into the bathroom. I try to scream, but the gloved hands grab my mouth tighter. I shift my chin up with as much strength as I can give, and I see the thief peering down at me. He whispers, there's some kind of monster in your bedroom.
Then silence falls and I hear the small, memorable patter of footsteps coming towards us. One step. Two steps. Three steps.